Well, number one, our first thing we look for are internal referrals. We'd love to have somebody that can validate culture fit, right? I don't think we necessarily need someone to have the perfect experience profile and decades of years of selling something exactly like what we sell, but we, we do want to have some kind of validation that there's a culture fit. So internal referrals would be the, the perfect place because we can, we can have somebody within our culture validate that their friend or their contact is a culture fit. But beyond that, even if we find them through a recruiter or through LinkedIn, that's still the first lens that we want to identify is, are they a culture fit for, for our culture? And then from there, we just want to find out, do you have work ethic? Do you have intelligence? Are you a culture fit? If you have those things, then we feel like we can teach you the rest. In our company, the first thing we want you to do is understand the ownership experience. So we actually start with the ownership experience and understanding a lot about our buyers first and, and get you starting to immediately get yourself versed in customer stories. And once you have a baseline of customer stories, then we start to slowly weave in over those first, you know, let's call it day 30 to day 60, more about our sales process. But I think it's very important first to get a baseline of customer stories and really understand the concerns of the buyer before we start teaching you how to, uh, you know, manipulate a buyer through that sales process. And I think one of the real missed opportunities, companies are so anxious to push out knowledge to new reps that they often miss a fantastic opportunity to learn from these new reps. So I think a fantastic opportunity in your onboarding is let's take this experience and the, these new perspectives that are coming from outside the company and, and how do we use onboarding to learn as much from them as we teach them about our own process? I think one of the great examples in our specific case, a lot of the, the sales reps that come to us, come to us because they've lost to us three or four times. And they get tired of losing to our company. And so they come uh, over to Workday. One of the things that the, the really interesting perspective is if we get this incredible detailed win-loss report is they describe to us what these individual sales cycles look like from their perspective as one of our competitors. And some of the richest stories that we get in our onboarding come from former competitive reps that have joined our company and tell us what some of these pursuits looked like from the competitive angle. One, we, we use an approach here called results-based selection. So what we want to try to do is remove a lot of the bias that happens in interviews where a lot of times sales managers make up their mind about a candidate in about the first five seconds, and then they just use the rest of the interview time to just further confirm the bias that they formed in those first five seconds. So our our learning and development team actually developed an interview methodology where each of our interviews for account executives are structured to specifically drill on characteristics that we've proven uh, predict success at Workday. So each interview person is, is, has a specific uh, goal in mind, a trait, and we're looking for specific evidence from their history that would indicate that they have that trait. So not so much looking about for them to tell us how they're going to do in the future. We're looking for specific behaviors and evidence of past behavior that indicates they have those traits that we're looking for. And we just continue to drill on those over the course of the interview. We found that's a much more objective way to be consistent in our hiring across uh, hundreds of sales reps.